Me now is Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. Senator, welcome. Good back morning, Russ. Lindsey Graham, despite achieving success in his career, has experienced a profound failure in love and marriage. Did you ever realize this aspect of his life? Lindsey has remained unmarried throughout his life, showing no inclination towards changing this status. Despite a brief romantic involvement with a foreign girlfriend, their relationship swiftly came to an end. Since then, Lindsay has seemingly abandoned the pursuit of romantic relationships altogether, and the reasons behind this decision will be explored further in the video. Stay tuned to uncover more about Lindsay's intentions as we delve deeper into his story. In his eagerly anticipated memoir, My Story, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham offers a candid glimpse into his personal life, finally shedding light on his romantic endeavors that have largely remained private until now. Set to be released online tomorrow, this tell-all e-book promises to provide readers with an intimate portrayal of the presidential hopeful's experiences with love and relationships. Graham reveals that during his formative years in his 20s, he was romantically involved with two women, hinting at a college sweetheart and detailing a significant relationship with a flight attendant named Sylvia, hailing from Vienna. The senator shares that his connection with Sylvia was profound enough that he came close to proposing, indicating a depth of emotion and commitment in their relationship. However, despite the intensity of their bond, fate seemed to intervene, leading to the conclusion that marriage was not meant to be for the pair. Reflecting on his life as he approaches 60, Graham offers poignant insights into his romantic journey, acknowledging that the timing for marriage never seemed quite right for him. He muses on missed opportunities, suggesting that perhaps the stars never aligned for him to meet the right person, or that the right person simply eluded him. With a touch of self-deprecating humor, he even entertains the notion that perhaps the right girl was wise enough to avoid entanglement with him altogether. In his forthcoming memoir, My Story, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham provides a deeply personal account of his journey to the present day as a 60-year-old bachelor seeking the highest office in the nation. Graham's unique status as one of only two bachelors to compete for the White House in decades has sparked curiosity and speculation, making his relationship status a hot topic on the campaign trail. Graham's candid narrative offers a glimpse into the circumstances that have shaped his life and influenced his decision to remain unmarried. He recounts the challenges he faced during his formative years, particularly following the untimely deaths of both his parents while he was still in college. This tragic loss left Graham to shoulder the responsibility of caring for his much younger sister, Darlene, whose well-being became his primary concern. In a poignant revelation, Graham shares the heartbreaking moment when Darlene discovered their father's lifeless body, an experience that undoubtedly left an indelible mark on both siblings. With their parents gone, Graham assumed the role of patriarch, taking on the responsibility of providing for his sister and managing the family-owned pool hall and beer bar they inherited. Following his graduation from law school, Lindsey Graham embarked on a transformative journey that would shape both his personal and professional life. Joining the Air Force as a Judge Advocate General, JAG, Graham found himself immersed in a career that not only provided him with valuable legal experience, but also offered a reprieve from the burden of familial responsibilities following the tragic loss of his parents. The decision to pursue a career in the Air Force led Graham to Europe, a move that proved to be pivotal in his journey of self-discovery and healing. Amidst the backdrop of unfamiliar surroundings and the excitement of experiencing new cultures, Graham found solace and liberation from the weight of his past. Despite the looming concern of the failing family business back home, Graham recalls feeling a sense of freedom and lightness that he had never experienced before. As he navigated his role as a JAG officer, Graham embraced the opportunities for growth and exploration that came with living abroad. For a young man who had grown up in a small town in South Carolina, the experience of traveling to vibrant European cities felt like stepping into a world of endless possibilities. 
Graham reflects on this period as an exciting moment in history, where every corner turned presented him with new adventures and perspectives. Amidst the backdrop of his newfound freedom, Graham found companionship and love in the form of two significant relationships during his time overseas. The first was with a fellow JAG officer named Carol, with whom he shared a deep connection both personally and professionally. Graham fondly remembers Carol as not only a talented lawyer, but also as a remarkable individual with whom he shared countless memorable moments. However, as is often the case in military life, their time together was limited by the constraints of duty, eventually leading them to part ways as their respective tours of duty came to an end. After parting ways with Carol as she returned to the United States, Graham reflects on her subsequent marriage and successful career with a sense of fondness and admiration. Despite the brevity of their courtship, he acknowledges the significance of their connection and the enduring respect he holds for her achievements, including her tenure on the staff of four-star General Colin Powell. However, it was Graham's relationship with Sylvia that would leave an even deeper impression on him. Describing their courtship as intense and swiftly evolving, Graham recalls moments when he entertained the idea of proposing to her, envisioning a future together despite the geographical and cultural divides between them. Yet as fate would have it, their love was hindered by practical realities. Sylvia's responsibilities to her aging mother in Vienna clashed with Graham's own ties to his hometown of South Carolina. Despite the geographical distance and the eventual dissolution of their romantic relationship, Graham maintains that he remained in touch with Sylvia for some time, cherishing the connection they shared. However, as life unfolded and circumstances changed, they inevitably drifted apart, ultimately losing contact after Sylvia's marriage to another man. A decision Graham regards with characteristic humility and grace, acknowledging that her choice to marry a doctor was undoubtedly a wise one. A wise. In a humorous yet revealing anecdote within his memoir, My Story, Senator Lindsey Graham offers a glimpse into his college years, including a brief mention of a girlfriend named Debbie. While Debbie's role in Graham's life is not extensively explored, her presence in this particular episode serves as a lighthearted reflection on his youth and the challenges of maintaining a tidy living space. Graham recalls a seemingly ordinary evening spent with Debbie in their shared living room, lounging on a well-loved couch acquired from a second-hand store, a testament, perhaps, to the frugality of college life. However, what begins as a mundane scene takes an unexpected turn, when Graham notices a peanut butter sandwich wedged between the cushions, an unintentional casualty of careless housekeeping. As Graham and Debbie rise to depart for their date, he discovers to his chagrin that the sandwich has adhered itself to Debbie's posterior, a comical mishap that does not go unnoticed by their circle of friends gathered in the room. The incident, while undoubtedly embarrassing at the time, becomes a source of amusement for Graham's peers, who eagerly share the tale across campus, ensuring its lasting presence in collegiate lore. Despite his status as a bachelor, Graham adamantly asserts his identity as a family man, emphasizing the deep connection he shares with his sister, Darlene, and the unwavering support of his relatives and lifelong friends. Throughout the pages of his memoir, Graham paints a vivid portrait of his relationship with Darlene, whom he lovingly describes as both a source of pride and a constant companion. Despite the untimely loss of their parents during his college years, Graham's bond with Darlene has only grown stronger over time, serving as a steadfast anchor in the midst of life's storms. I'm as proud of her as my parents would have been, Graham writes, underscoring the profound sense of familial pride that continues to shape his identity. Their shared experiences and unwavering devotion to each other have forged a bond that transcends mere siblinghood, providing Graham with a sense of belonging and purpose. In addition to his sister, Graham expresses deep gratitude for the network of relatives and lifelong friends who have stood by his side through every triumph and tribulation.
Their unwavering support has been a constant source of strength, offering solace in moments of sorrow and celebrating alongside him in times of joy. Despite the absence of a traditional nuclear family, Graham asserts that he has never felt the lack of familial love in his life. From the depths of despair to the heights of success, he has always been surrounded by love and companionship, a testament to the richness of his relationships and the resilience of the human spirit. As he concludes his memoir, Graham reflects on the profound blessings bestowed upon him, acknowledging that he is as blessed in love as any man on earth. Senator Lindsey Graham takes readers on a nostalgic journey through his childhood in central South Carolina, offering colorful anecdotes that paint a vivid picture of his formative years. From mischievous escapades to cherished memories at his family's establishment, the Sanitary Cafe, Graham's recollections provide insight into the experiences that shaped his character and fueled his zest for life. Yet, amidst the jovial atmosphere of the cafe, Graham acknowledges instances where discipline was swift and uncompromising. He vividly recounts an incident where his father intervened to defend the honor of a beloved patron, Mr. Jake, who had been subjected to a racial slur by a disrespectful patron. In a display of righteous indignation, Dude seized Graham's Little League football helmet and delivered a decisive blow to the offender, rendering him unconscious, an act that, while shocking, underscored Dude's unwavering commitment to upholding dignity and respect within his establishment. Through his memoir, Graham offers a nuanced reflection on the racial attitudes and practices that pervaded the fabric of his community, acknowledging both the injustices of the past and the gradual process of change that unfolded over time. Central, like many towns in the South, grappled with the legacy of segregation, with a significant portion of its population being black. Against this backdrop, Graham candidly acknowledges the racial disparities that existed within his family's business, the Sanitary Café. While his parents operated the bar with a policy of serving beer to customers of legal age, regardless of race, Graham reveals the stark reality that black patrons were expected to consume their purchases off-premises, a practice reflective of the deeply ingrained segregationist norms of the era. Despite the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which officially ended segregation, Graham acknowledges that his parents did not fully implement desegregation in their establishment until the early 1970s, a delay he candidly describes as much later than it should have been implemented. Graham grapples with the discomfort of confronting this painful aspect of his family's history, acknowledging the profound impact of systemic racism on the lives of black individuals in his community. However, Graham also contextualizes this reality within the broader social landscape of Central during that time. He points to the integration of local schools and his own friendships with black classmates and teammates in sports as evidence of progress and evolving attitudes. While recognizing that his parents were not progressives by contemporary standards, Graham emphasizes their recognition of the injustice perpetuated by segregation and their eventual commitment to rectifying it. In confronting the legacy of segregation within his family's business, Graham acknowledges the moral imperative of confronting injustice and striving for a more equitable society. He reflects on the corrosive effects of discrimination, not only on those who actively perpetuated it, but also on those who were innocently exposed to its consequences, underscoring the importance of collective action in challenging systemic inequities. Graham recounts the moment when his younger sister, Darlene, innocently uttered a racial slur, unaware of its offensive connotations a reflection of the deeply ingrained racial attitudes that permeated their community. Driven by a sense of moral conviction and a desire for change, Graham took it upon himself to confront his parents about the need to align their establishment with federal law and end the practice of segregation. Despite his tender age, 
Graham recognized the injustice of perpetuating discriminatory practices and urged his parents to take action. Moved by her son's plea and guided by a newfound sense of moral clarity, Graham's mother took a decisive step towards desegregation. Symbolized by the simple act of setting a bottle of beer on the bar and motioning for a black customer to take a seat, a gesture laden with profound significance. With each subsequent customer, Graham's mother repeated this act of inclusion, gradually dismantling the barriers that had long divided their community. However, the journey towards desegregation was not without its challenges. Graham candidly acknowledges that his family's decision to enforce federal law led to a temporary loss of customers, as some patrons resisted the change and chose to take their business elsewhere. The bar, regrettably, became segregated again in reverse, reflecting the complexities and tensions inherent in confronting deeply entrenched social norms. Yet despite the initial resistance, Graham's family persevered, gradually regaining the trust and support of their community as they embraced the principles of equality and inclusion. Over time, the sanitary cafe evolved to reflect the changing times, with a diverse clientele coming together under one roof, a testament to the power of collective action and the capacity for positive change. In 2000, Graham threw his support behind Senator John McCain's bid for the presidency, recognizing McCain's leadership and experience. This endorsement underscored Graham's alignment with McCain's political values and priorities. Subsequently, in 2008, Graham assumed the role of national co-chair of McCain's presidential campaign, playing a prominent role in supporting McCain's candidacy and advocating for his vision for the country. During the 2012 presidential election cycle, Graham's endorsement was highly coveted among Republican candidates seeking the party's nomination. However, Graham opted to refrain from endorsing a candidate before the January South Carolina Republican primary, maintaining a strategic approach to his political engagements. After Rick Santorum withdrew from the race in April 2012, leaving Mitt Romney as the presumptive nominee, Graham threw his support behind Romney's candidacy. This endorsement reflected Graham's pragmatic approach to supporting the Republican Party's nominee and his recognition of Romney's qualifications for the presidency. In October 2014, during his Senate re-election campaign, Graham hinted at the possibility of his own presidential bid, expressing a willingness to enter the presidential race if certain conditions were met. His remarks signaled a potential willingness to advocate for his policy priorities on a national stage and contribute to the broader discourse within the Republican Party. One of Graham's notable policy stances came in March 2015 during a Politics and Pies forum where he advocated for the reversal of defense spending cuts. Graham's bold assertion that he would use the military to prevent Congress from leaving town until the issue was addressed underscored his commitment to national security and defense priorities. In April 2015, Graham signaled his intent to explore a presidential run during an appearance on Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace. With characteristic candor, Graham expressed his likelihood of running for president, citing a desire to address the pressing challenges facing the nation. He underscored the importance of fundraising as a key factor in his decision-making process, highlighting the practical considerations involved in mounting a viable campaign. Shortly thereafter, on May 18, 2015, Graham formally announced his candidacy for president during an appearance on CBS This Morning. His decision to enter the race was driven by a deep-seated concern for the state of global affairs, with Graham lamenting that he believed the world is falling apart. This declaration marked the official commencement of Graham's presidential bid, as he sought to offer his vision for addressing the myriad challenges confronting the nation. With his candidacy officially launched, Graham embarked on a spirited campaign, crisscrossing the country to connect with voters and articulate his policy platform. However, despite his earnest efforts, Graham faced significant hurdles, including a lack of widespread support and poor polling numbers. Ultimately, on December 21, 2015, Graham made the difficult decision to suspend his presidential campaign, 
citing the challenges of garnering sufficient backing and momentum to sustain a competitive bid. His withdrawal from the race signaled a pragmatic acknowledgement of the political realities at play, as Graham redirected his focus towards other avenues of public service. In the wake of his withdrawal from the presidential race, Graham remained engaged in national politics, endorsing former Florida Governor Jeb Bush for the Republican nomination. However, as the 2016 election unfolded, and it became increasingly clear that Donald Trump would secure the Republican nomination, Graham distanced himself from the party's nominee, expressing reservations about Trump's candidacy and leadership style. On November 8, 2016, Graham made headlines once again when he announced that he had cast his vote for Evan McMullen, an independent candidate running for president. Graham's decision to break ranks with his party's nominee underscored his commitment to principle and his willingness to challenge the status quo in pursuit of what he believed to be in the best interests of the country. What do you think about Lindsey Graham's love story and the relationships surrounding him? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.